when it comes to creativity, when it comes to dance in Rwanda, you will not talk about that without talking about Mashirika. It's Mashirika that has given birth to poets. It's given birth to actors. It's given birth to a lot of amazing creative people. And the brain behind that is Hope Azeta. It is such a great privilege to welcome her to the show. You're an explorer. That's life, looking at what life is all about, what it has to offer. So as an explorer on this life's journey, mm -hmm. what is it that you have encountered? I've encountered very unimaginable stories, first of all, given the background of uh, our history here. And every day you meet a human being, you open up this space that is safe, a space of trust. What we've been doing basically is using art as a tool for social transformation. So we've tapped on subjects of domestic violence, uh, subjects of trauma uh, because of what happened in our country, subjects of mental health, uh, forgiveness and justice, We've gone as far as reconciliation, like also like trying to <laughs> define what is reconciliation. Yeah. You know, so it has been issue after issue, issue after issue. And then we're just thinking like, okay, 20 years after now, mm -hmm. no more issues. But again, you find that you're talking about art and it, art is about life. Art is, about, is a mirror of <laughs> society and life. For as long as we live, as, art will exist. Yeah, and as long as there's life, there's the two sides of it. There's darkness and light. Whether we like it or not, there will be a lighter side, there will be a dark side. So we always define it here as life is a path of, so of thorns and roses. So, you know, before you started Mashirika, you could have gone into counseling. You'd have said, you know, let me become a counselor because mm -hmm. that's what happens in that space. Mm -hmm. You encourage people to unpack. Mm -hmm. Why did you specifically go for music and dance? Well, I think... I found music and dance because it created a safe space easily, but uh, music has the power, or art has the power. It is the master key to very difficult conversations. And you know, it is that space that creates a space where you can walk in and breathe. It's a space where we accept mistakes. Every mistake is beautiful because it is a flavor or a color to the kind of art we are looking for. So there is a way art makes you breathe, you know, and just, play like a child, tap on the innocence that you've lost for long, reclaim or bring that child alive or awaken that child in you and just play and it just feels good to play. So I think that I my that. spirit as a as hope, I love playing a lot and laughing a lot and I think that gives me, gives me that. That's crazy. Is it important for an adult to awaken that child in them? It is very, very important because it's the, pow the power of play is very important because you cannot be creative if you can't play. Oh. You, you cannot be creative or innovative uh, if you can't laugh. Yeah. <laughs> you, I mean, imagine That's a life true. without laughter. No. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. imagine a life where you have grown from kindergarten to university and you've never sung. Never. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah, so basically it's a power to, uh, to, to help us breathe. And, no. you know, so the child in us is very important, yeah. but also yes. the child is very nice in healing processes. Wow. When you're going under through very difficult circumstances, and then suddenly you start tapping on the other child that used to play, that was really above prob problems, that was yes. floating above issues. Yes. There's some nice feeling around it, and it's always nice to bend that and side. You talk about healing, mm -hmm. when somebody in, is struggling with something in their adulthood, in most cases they will be asked about their childhood. Do yeah. you, what was it? So even the, the harsh childhood memories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. play a role mm -hmm. in the healing of an adult. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that child exactly. is yeah. very important. Oh, it is a, it's very important. Yeah. It's very important because everyone holds that child in, the, in their souls. We, we carry that child in us. And yeah. Was it easy for people to buy your idea? Not at all, because, you know, there's a way art has always been seen as just an entertainment, anything. You know, art has always been seen as anyone can do it. Anyone yeah. can sing uh, where you dance or you go to school to learn how to dance. I mean, go do something more serious. So it has never been taken as... To buy it was really took time. Yeah. Took time. It's not until when they see a very well uh, crafted production on stage and they said there was something unique. These guys mm -hmm. are very professional. Then that's when they start realizing that we put in so much time in it, you know. And you can tell that even like in our society, um, it's not about us yet, but we are almost there. How 
what, what do you normally go through to get that team of people? Yeah. So to get the team of people to help us do that, first of all, the way we get our clients is that you can see their messages out on in newspapers and people are looking for like mass communication or mass sensitization about a certain issue. It could be even a lot of people are not just buying into, it could be some health outbreak somewhere, it could be some behavior change issue that wants to be changed, let's say like violence against children, that has been our biggest campaign with UNICEF. So how do we get people here? For the last 20 years, we've focused also on restructuring our, our, um, our, how our company works. So we have the community theater uh, department okay. because both me and my other business partner, our background is theater for development. Mm -hmm. So we are given skills in identifying a gap in society and then you start responding to that gap using the arts. And then through that, you need a good team on board. So we have had to train writers. We have had to train people who go out to the community to do the research work, because they will start with the desk research. You need to know exactly yeah. why are people not buying into this? Okay. What are they so that you can incorporate yeah. it into the play. Yeah, exactly, because you don't want to take something, uh, my teacher used to say, you don't want to take, to, to take pork and sell it in a Muslim community. No. You want to take something that will be bought back. So what is the problem here? Why is it? Why, is it, why, is, why are men not buying the, into this and women are buying into this? Yet it's a big obstacle in their development. So you go into the roots of the issues and to go to do that you need p p good people go to communities and you know, interview people. They bring the, this material and then you take it back to them. Then we start developing characters like this. So it's a back and forth community, our office, community, our desk, community, our desk. So the communities or our society are part of the authors and directors of what, what we take back, back to them. I love that. So, so by the time just come to you and you feed them mm, with stuff. You don't just no, give we them just, We don't just learn from nowhere, like, no. no. We, we, by the, we've been with them into creating this. It's like we've been cooking this meal together and finally it's ready to share. Along the way you started Women Who Arts Festival, yes. it has grown to be a phenomenal festival. I doubt we have a similar one anywhere else in East mm -hmm. Africa. How did that come to be? So six years ago, I was approached by um, uh, alumni of the Africa Leadership Initiative, mm -hmm. and their purpose is to push you from success to significance. So they came and said to me and said, well, we want you to join this course. It's two years. I'm like, two years course? Me going back to school? No. Kid me not. I'm not. They said, Hope, oh, it's not two years, because <laughs> it's just one, four weeks, in two years, I'm like, that's doable. <laughs> I said, in the East African region, and it's a leadership course. I'm like, but no, 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 no. Lead, 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 leading things and politics. No, 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 that is not like my, my glass of water. No, 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 I'm not going to go. They said, no, what you're doing every day yeah. is actually you're leading a community. It's leadership. It's not just about politics. I keep saying we're all leaders, yeah. but in our different so capacities. At, at the end of this two years course, you're supposed to sign out mm -hmm. with a legacy-driven project. Okay. And that legacy-driven project has to be very challenging. It's not just another play like you used to do. It's not anything. So I had to push myself. I was like, you know, every time I travel, and because of the kind of performances we do, people are like, well, how do you do this? But I found that the performances we do that really touch people's lives are performances that we have developed with the genocide memorial. Oh. So the, the plays that have come from the testimonies from the genocide memory have touched people around the world. Then that's when the idea came, so why don't we do a festival in this space? But that was the most craziest ever thing to think about. We were like, hope nobody's going to show up. Why do you take things to the memory? I'm like, why not? Why can't we not, why can we not have this conversation? Our stories come from there. This is a story, and mm. this is not a random story, this is a global story. global story. What has happened here has happened elsewhere before. How about we use this as a backdrop of a failed humanity to, you know, inspire us to create works as artists, to make sure that this never happens anywhere around, not on our watch, as long as we are still alive. So that's how I jumped into the sea without even a dollar and it started like a, a festival in a place where people are questioning a lot. But that, that's what I really wanted at that time. Now I felt like this is what they mean by challenge because not every play fits in that place. You have to read scripts carefully, you have to craft the content and conversation. So it's the only festival where you find that has a, a different theme every year. So like our theme last year was walls, barriers and borders. 
and we're talking about mental issues, we're talking about the wars, I mean, immigration of people thinking that going abroad is, you know, your answer is your, your exit to, to wealth. Yeah. But again, it was really nice to understand also that the wars which are mental health uh, is also an epidemic in our young people. We need to talk about social media and mental health. We need to talk about these conversations. Depression. Depression, all of these things that are going on with the young people, depression, anxiety, that we don't usually talk in our own conversations. So this year, again, our theme is going to be like breathe. And, and uh, this, the, 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 breathe. Uh, breathe. So we are saying like stop, breathe, and live. Because we are failing to stop and What's breathe. The idea behind breathe. Breathe is we like are you we, are, we, we are breathing, <laughs> but you know, as soon as we finish this interview, oh, we're going to look at our phones. Like next, what did I? Who, which phone did I? Oh, oh my God! I have three. I have uh, three missed calls. Hey, you know, oh, these two emails. You know, you, we are, you're constantly chasing life, chasing life, and we we fail to just stop, breathe. Because even a car, an engine, cannot run non-stop. An engine stops and goes to recharge, and you recharge, change the oil. But human beings don't even have time. I don't even whether you have had lunch today, or even had two glasses of Can water. You not talk about that. Okay, okay. we're just like <laughs> running and running and running. But again, oh, innovation also is also becoming an obstacle in our lives as human beings. The climate change issue is coming on board. And we, as some of us, think that that's maybe a Western problem. But environmental issues are our own global. issues as well. They are global issues. So we are talking one foot is in lifestyle and another foot is environment. Yeah. yeah. So, now, I'll just take you back a bit when you say we need to take a moment. Life itself is really fast, you know? know. And it's getting faster and faster. And even crazier. Like. And crazier. That I think one's biggest fear is taking that moment to pause mm -hmm. because they will be overtaken. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what do we do then? You want us to breathe. What do we do not to be overtaken at that moment when we pause to breathe? I mean, sometimes it's just like, even if you count like one up to 20, let me just sit in this chair and count one, two. You're going to, by the time you get to number five, you're going, six, five, three, four, five, three, you're going to go five. <laughs> you, can't, you can't even count like from one up to 20 without rushing. Because it's like, ah, when will I get, I don't know what's happening to our pulse and muscle as humans, but we are like, yeah. instant coffee. Like everything is instant, everything is fast. Yeah. So you go to buy painkillers, how fast does it act? How fast, how fast, how fast? But there's a beat that we are given when we are born, yeah. and it's not a fast one. Yes. And we need to listen to that beat, wow. that heartbeat. And, you know, when you talk and about, we never do that. When you talk about instant coffee, I think the greatest people that fall in that category today mm. are the youth, the, the youth. young people. Yeah. And yeah. that's a group that you are deeply concerned yeah. about and worried for. And I'm um, really, it's getting more frustrating every day because when you look at young people, they are running, they are chasing. And when you try to settle down and work things, things out together, they lack the patience to be persistent, mm. to be consistent. So life is about consistency. It's about getting, you know, good at your craft. But they're too rushing to this and that and that and that because there's a pressure on social media to, to stay relevant. Mm -hmm. So being in your own, uh, in your own shell and creating your stuff silently, is also becoming a problem. To just yeah. stop and because, because you want to share every single bit of that process on uh, social media. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's just pressure that we are running into a fast forward um, kind of rhythm to, to grab fame instead of just doing whatever we need to do and fame finds us, you know, because so and so has, I mean, I don't know how many followers. How many do I have? Also, that becomes a frustration. And then when you, we, 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 sometimes I'm really having a conversation. I'm like, actually, people who are really doing things don't even have many followers in this world. That's they don't true. even have time. I'm like, do you go to Twitter? I'm like, no, 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 Twitter. Do, 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 you know, but they're just followers. But which kind of followers? Yeah. You know, so there's a very big problem now that between reality versus you know, living in this other bubble yeah. of, of technology. And it, it's mm. so considering you have and it's all, it's really not good for creativity as well because okay. creativity is about your pulse of breath. And I was going to ask, considering you have a lot of young people that 
come and have gone through your hands? Do you take a moment to talk to them about this? Do you talk to them about being authentic, being creative? Do you talk to them about that? Paying attention to the heartbeat. Yeah. 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 And at times ignoring the social media or the pressure that comes from there. We do talk about that sometimes, but sometimes we are more also into pressure to produce works. But so you don't like follow them. But that is what has created this new cohort we've just now started called Elites. We are going to give them life skills to develop their personality because we, we, we are now telling them you are a brand. What kind of, we need to build a brand. What kind of brand are you? If you unpacked for me who you are, like layer by layer, how many layers are we going to have? So to be a brand, you need to first define yourself, be authentic self, find yourself, reclaim self first, and then get on a steady knee before you can run. But they are running before they get on a steady knee. Wow. And even a person on marathon cannot run before you say, on your marks, you've got to be steady first. Get set. Are we ready, people? Go. But we are now going before we, on your marks. Yeah. We, we, we don't want to go through the process. Not no. anymore. We're not that patient. No, no, no. It is, uh, yeah, it brings this kind of silence that we are now having. What do we need to do? Stop. And <laughs> stop and reflect and uh, ask yourself questions. You need to, I think we need to have first an internal conversation before you can have even a conversation outside. Mm -hmm. There is this inner circle we are ignoring and we are going to the third circle outside our lives before we go into our inner circle and have a conversation and say, and just greet yourself. Today, how are you, Hope? How are you today? Even if you're a dancer, like, you touch yourself. Like, have, just first have a human connection before you can have it with, with, with somebody, with your neighbor. Yeah. Ask yourself, how are you feeling today? What is not working right in your body? What are the questions unanswered in your... Like, you need to have a first an internal conversation going on. And once that is centered and rooted, then you can add another circle. But before this, is, it's like a pillar in a house. Without a pillar in a house, the house can't stand. Yeah, can't stand. Do you feel like we are more concerned about the external, how we appear to the outside world? Exactly. We are hell-bent on creating a certain personality for the outside world to see, as yeah. opposed to knowing ourselves from the inside. Exactly, because now we are even afraid to know ourselves. We are afraid to, and uh, in my, some of my acting exercises, I ask people, we reach a point and it's very intense, and it's all tissue time, but I ask them, just sit down and write a letter to yourself. Just write to hope. If hope is going through a struggle and you have that thorn pricking, you write to that pain. Dear pain, you've been living with me for the last 20 years. I feel drained into this. Just first start from there. Write a letter to yourself mm -hmm. before you can write a letter to somebody else. So, but we're afraid to go there because of we might encounter things that might also make us really Break, break apart, fall apart. Mm. But when it, that happens, that's when you start reclaiming yourself. And when that happens is when you stand strong. But before that happens, you're just like another floating bubble so with, a, with a mask on your face of a smile when you're bleeding within. And uh, um, it becomes very difficult when you engage with people to really get into very deep conversations. Yeah but art helps us get there. And it's always, teaching yourself something you is really good. And if you don't know, it's not a crime. Yeah. It's never too late. You can know. You can know. It's okay to know, but you know, we are being pushed to lie and live in denial that we know this, we know that, we know that, yet we don't know. So, you know, you are a very experienced person in your field. Have you ever encountered a place where you had to humble yourself and patiently unlearn what you had learned? Yes, I can remember like one film I was working on was called Sometimes in April by Raoul Peck. I think it also features like Idris Eba, these big actors we see on screens. But I remember that time I worked in that space, I never cast a big film in my life. I had always learned small, small works. This was around 2003. They brought in a casting director from Paris. And then when they brought her in, she found assistants hired for her. 
but every day she fired artists because she 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 she, she fired this casting sorry yeah. she fired assistants yeah, mm -hmm. and I always remained but I knew what the problem was. None of those assistants had read the script. You could tell. So every time she sent them, can you go and get me three militias and one woman who is like this, they would bring maybe their friends or relatives because they're looking for a job. And then they get in trouble. And then we all get frustrated, you know, because sometimes you need to hit the street looking for actors. So it just came to that. Then later, when she realized that she had to ask me, Hope, what did you study? I told her I studied art. Then she realized, so you're a real profession. I'm like, yes, how, what did you keep? I'm like, I didn't have to, because I wanted to also learn. And indeed, yeah. I learned so much, from, learned her. So much from her. I had never done such a big film, but I had to learn. I had to learn how to shoot, edit, and do just, you know, edit works just for the director. So there's so much hard work behind all this. You know, that is so amazing, because a lot of us now go into different places with this attitude of I know it all mm, mm, mm. and you would want to show even the person that is better than you or more experienced than you that I know this mm, mm, mm. and it is contributing to our failure it is yes it is we're not taking a moment to learn yeah. we're not patient enough to be told mm. some things in our field that we don't know but mm -hmm. I always ask my fellow artists how many times do you find a doctor says I know how to inject I can inject you. I'm like, you're a doctor, that's mm -hmm. enough. You don't have to like, what you know, what, what we'll know yeah, by what you... So our works and products have to define who we are. So humility is really key. I mean, like Steve Jobs, I mean, those are, people have innovated things in this world, are the most humble people. When I look at like Bill Gates, just in a little, if I, you met him, he was like nobody. He'd be like, yeah, he'd be like any other person. Yeah, so they are, but their works really de Speaks define who they are. So for me, I really think there's never, time enough to learn and to read and to feed your soul with information and knowledge. Yeah. And I don't think we have enough time for that today wow. because we are in Yeah, we are, we are in coffee. coffee. We are, we are forever on the move. <laughs> for, like right now I'm waiting for us to finish this interview yeah, yeah, that yeah, I can go check who has sent me a message mm -hmm. on WhatsApp. Mm -hmm. Is there a voice not there? Mm -hmm. I hope as we conclude um, your 20 years in the art space as a director, a mentor, a creator, what would be that life lesson that you want to share with a young person that is watching? Mm -hmm. uh, what I really want to share with them is, is first of all, the issue of identity, to know where they came from. Because we tend to be either embarrassed by where we came from, because it's not posh enough, or because it does not you don't want to be humble enough that you learned anything from that place. Mm -hmm. But where we came from is our route to who we are. Wow. And, and where we are going. And where we are going. Because you cannot know where you're going if you don't know where you came from. So it's very important to know where you came from. Uh, because one thing also artists, young people need to know is that we are all born as a masterpiece. We are not on earth by, we are not a mistake on earth. We are here for a purpose and to know that purpose and get to know where you're going. You just you need to shine the masterpiece you are instead of trying to shine another one's masterpiece. Because in you there's an inbuilt masterpiece. Every one of us is a masterpiece. But we tend to ignore who we are and to celebrate who we are and work towards who we are and use that to, to spring, to, to, to walk to, as the first stepping stone. But we just want to, you know, become a Beyonce, become oh, this, but you know, even she didn't you become Beyonce overnight. No, yeah, but, but also, and, and everything also comes with hard work. Yeah. It is hard work. There's no shortcut to success. Never. Even if they, you find a way out there, you still fall back. Because for a plane to take off, it starts from the ground. <laughs> and ascends. It does not, like, find itself in the skies without ascending. So you cannot ascend without starting from somewhere. It's a process. Yeah, it is a process. Identity. Who are you? Because once you know who you are, accept who you are, then that is what the world will interact with. And do not forget you're a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. That is what Hopper said. Every one of us has it in them. We have that greatness in us. And I hope that from this conversation, you will embark on a new journey to find yourself. If you've been shying away from your past, you do not want to be associated with it because you want to be seen to be too cool, you know, too cool. 
you're better off being too cool but also authentic. Yeah. Too cool with a personal, solid identity. Thank you so much for watching Evolve Rwanda. Please do subscribe to our channel and the hashtag is Evolve Rwanda. Wherever you put that, we will find you across all social media platforms. Take care.